Welcome. Uh, it's good to see uh, so many faces here, many of whom I recognise, uh, and from a wide cross-section of the community. I guess what the people in the room probably represent one of the um, both strengths and challenges of a region like this, which is our diversity. Um, we have a very diverse community, diverse landscape, diverse makeup of our economy, and that's a huge strength for our region. But it does mean it's incredibly challenging when you come to planning to try and uh, ensure that all those voices get heard and that the issues and challenges that we face um, uh, work through in a way that everyone gets an opportunity to be heard and hopefully that the outcomes are something that people can buy into in the long run. Going back in history uh, just a wee bit, the last time I was involved in something uh, like this I came in halfway through in the late 1990s after the plan had been largely developed and put out into the community for consultation. And I think one of the things that I learned through that process is that perhaps an investment up front in the early engagement, getting out in the community and asking people their opinions, trying to get feedback before you get involved in the legal kind of submissions process is probably a very good place to start. And perhaps it could have been done considerably better back in the day. There's definitely uh, a number of people who will engage in this process who will remember that process very keenly. Um, on both sides of many of the very interesting debates and discussions which took place at the time. And one thing I think it's crucial to try and avoid this time is the degree of acrimony and divisiveness that that drove in communities. I still talk to people now who talk about the issues that they faced back in the late 1990s. If you mention council, that still colours a lot of their view about how they see us right through to today. So as we embark on this process and understanding the many challenges um, in the, particularly the rural environment that we're going to have to confront, um, the process that we run is going to be critically important. We have a very diverse economy, as I said, largely driven off the primary industries of farming, fishing, forestry, horticulture and tourism. That's supported by a huge amount of uh, ancillary industries and businesses that exist right around the region, many of them in industrial and rural industrial zones, but many of them scattered throughout our environment. This has been a very successful formula, but it's a challenge to, as more and more people move into the district to manage the different conflicts between these different activities. I don't think it comes as any surprise to anyone that we're also growing enormously fast. Anyone who's driven in around Richmond or many of our other townships in the last five years can see that day to day. One of the ironies is the better we do the planning, the better that we protect the environment, the better environment we create, the better lifestyle we provide in this region, the more people want to come here. It's a good problem to have in many ways, but it's also hugely challenging in terms of how to, um, I guess, provide for that at the same time as trying to protect the reason that people come here in the first place. I think one of the other massive challenges is that the land, the sea, the environment, the biodiversity, the native bush, the rivers, the lakes, the things that we all enjoy and the reason that many people either choose to stay here or move here are also a place where many people rely on for their livelihoods. And trying to balance those two things up is not impossible, but it's also not easy. This is all against a background of significant uncertainty. And one of the things which I guess has been very certain, not that anyone necessarily, or not that everyone necessarily likes it or agrees with it, has been the RMA, which has been a fairly consistent document that both councils and communities and people have had to work with for a long time. This now uh, looks as though it's almost certain, post-election, to be up for a significant review, regardless of uh, which side of uh, the political spectrum wins the um, upcoming election. One of the other things that's been, I guess, consistent across both political, main political parties has been the increasing use of national instruments, national policy statements and national environmental standards, which again limit the amount of influence that local communities can have on the outcomes of planning processes such as the one we're about to head into. This also provides a degree of conflict and concern for communities who may want to have influence over certain things but are unable to. So I'm really keen to ensure that this process starts the right way through this early engagement, engages as many people as possible across the community, not just those who are, I guess, living it day to day, for whom it may be a job or a role, a statutory responsibility, larger businesses, companies and entities, but also as many people right across our diverse communities as possible. Because ultimately this is going to be something that the community has to buy into. 
that will not be easy. I certainly don't underestimate the challenge of engaging as wide a group of people as possible, but it's something that I think if we start the right way, we have the best chance of doing. Tēnā koutou. Uh, my name is Lisa McGlinchey. I'm the team leader for Natural Resources uh, Policy. We cover um, the air, land, water and coastal parts of the plan. Um, I um, moved to Richmond about 11 years ago with my family, primarily to enjoy the, the wonderful rivers, uh, beaches and native bush we have here in Tasman. Um, luckily for us, the people are pretty amazing as well. Um, tonight, I just want to have a, a talk about why it's important, if I can get this to move on, um, why it's important for us to get your input um, into our planning process. Um, so what is the plan? Um, it's got three main functions and I guess one of the most significant for tonight is that it sets the direction for our significant regional issues. Um, so in terms of the process, we'll be looking at defining what our key issues are and where we want to be um, in the future. Uh, as part of that, we also want to look at how we're going to achieve that. Um, so we've got numerous methods that we can use. Could be education and advocacy, uh, works and services by the council, um, monitoring and investigations, um, financial subsidy for those um, activities that we want to promote um, and encourage, um, and the last one being regulation. Um, if we do choose regulation as a method um, to get where we need to go, then um, the plan, part of the plan forms a rule book, um, which basically says what you and your neighbour and businesses can and cannot do. Um, this defines what activities require a resource consent um, and which activities are permitted. And if you do need a resource consent, then the plan provides policy guidance um, for decisions on whether those consents should be granted um, and with what conditions. Um, so I guess probably everyone here tonight's got some issues that they're very passionate about, um, that they'd like to see addressed. And I'd just like to invite you to think about um, other aspects that you actually might want to provide input on as well across the plan. Um, so the plan can affect uh, our daily lives in a, in a whole bunch of ways. Um, for example, whether you were woken up by a rooster or an alarm clock this morning um, will be influenced by um, our zoning rules. Um, so if you're in town, you're only allowed six hens, no roosters. Um, which land and water was used to grow your breakfast this morning? Which catchment did the milk and your coffee come from? So um, our water allocation and our discharge rules influence how we use our land. Um, where your place of work is and how easy it was for yourself or your employees to get to work in the morning is influenced by our zoning and our transport rules, um, which influence how our urban and rural areas grow um, and how easy it is to get around the district. Um, when you arrive at work, you might use the restroom after all that coffee, uh, where does it go uh, and where should it go? So currently our treated uh, wastewater is discharged to the sea, should it be discharged to land like our biosolids? Um, on your way home from work, there's a storm brewing. Do you need to be concerned about whether your house is going to be flooded or whether a, uh, a landslide might occur? Um, our natural hazard rules uh, our provisions seek to place new development in areas that aren't at risk. Uh, the weekend rolls around, you've got friends to visit, and so you decide to take them to some special places in Tasman. So what makes those places special, um, and how what, might we protect some of those characteristics? Uh, can you swim in the beaches and the, the rivers that you take them to without getting sick? Uh, is there abundant bird life and fish life? Um, and if not, how can we make that better? Um, so these are just some of the ways that the plan um, can affect our daily lives. Um, but it's really important that we hear from you what your priorities are, what you value, so that we can make sure that the, the plan has the right drivers. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, my name's Barry Johnson, a little bit like uh, Lisa. I'm, I've only recently moved to Tasman. Um, the reasons I've moved here is probably the same reasons you're here tonight. It's a great place to, to live, to work and to play. And the things that, that enable that, our resource management plans, um, they enable development, they ensure our rivers and our, and our beaches and our lakes are safe places to swim um, and continue to be that way. Um, our resource management plans balance those competing demands for our resources, they ensure our air quality is maintained or improved where it's needed, 
we look after our biodiversity, um, the list goes on. Um, our current planning framework which came in hot off the heels of the Resource Management Act in 1991. Our, resource manage, our regional policy statement was originally notified in 1996, came into effect in 2001. Our resource management plan was originally notified in 1998, and as our Mayor pointed out, it had quite a, a spectacular impact when it was first notified. Through the years, um, that has slowly become operative in parts. I think since it was introduced, we've had something like 65 plan changes and about the same number of variations. So a little bit like the Resource Management Act, over time it's lost a bit of its coherency, it's been chopped around and changed, and it's probably time to actually take a look at it. Also, under the Resource Management Act, we're required to review our plans and have a look at them every 10 years to see how they're going and whether we need to change them. Um, over the last 18 months, uh, the team, the policy team and most of the council has been kicking the tyres on these plans to see what's been working, what hasn't been working, what should we retain, what shouldn't we retain. And as of today, we've published just over 20 reports on the efficiency and effectiveness of the current plan. They're on our website if you want to have a look um, at the work we've done. And that will really form the basis for what we do going forward in terms of developing our new plan. Now, the intention is that our new plan will be a single plan that combines our regional policy statement, our regional and our district functions. We're calling it Aoriri Kiuta, Aoriri Kitai, the Tasman Environment Plan. Um, and it's a working title, clearly with the changes that are, are ahead of us, um, that's our intention at this stage to, to develop a single plan. A little bit similar to, for example, the, the Marlborough Plan, which does the same thing. It's one combined plan that deals with resource management across the whole district. So over the years, I mean, we've had a lot of recent, and recent case law, legislation have changed. The RMA's been amended nearly 25 times in 25 years. Our environment's changed since the uh, Tasman Resource Management Plan came out. Our community's changed, it's grown, it's changed in its diversity. The issues are changing. Um, we also, through the, through the multiple changes, um, there's an opportunity here to improve how the plan works. We have new planning standards which require us to rewrite our plan in a particular format, which is similar across the country. Um, and the amount of national direction that's coming out means that there's added complexity and added scale in what we're doing. So there really is an opportunity here to take a look at what's working, what do we need to change, and to update our plan and bring it into kind of the modern era. The first thing we need to do in this first round of community engagement is all around what are the, what are the big issues for Tasman? What are the big environmental issues? Now we've heard through the likes of the long-term plan, community engagement, through um, the Tita Ihu intergenerational strategy, we know what the big issues are and we want to check in with the community. Have we got those right? Have we got to put an environmental lens over there? So are we looking at it? Have we, have we got those right for the, for the rest of the plan to anchor the rest of the plan? So you know, what are we doing around biodiversity and a declining biodiversity? We've got a huge amount of uh, legis new legislation on fresh water we need to introduce. Well, how are we going managing population growth? There's a real tension there between the requirement to provide for, for more housing and protecting our productive land. We have natural hazards, they're still there, they're getting more frequent, the impacts of climate change and sea level rise makes it even more, more pertinent. And along with those, our plan development, I mean this is just a selection of the new legislation and the new proposals over the last 12 months. There's a huge deluge of national policy direction and new legislation from central government that we need to look at, put a local flavour on and develop into, into our local plan, into our new plan. And of course the uncertainty, the elephant in the room is what will the, the review of the RMA provide us? Um, certainly the, the Randerson report, the review of the RMA that's come out, clearly looks a lot about process and streamlining the process. So if we look at that, we can assume there's always going to be plans, there's always going to be some sort of consenting environment, but what it really looks like, we'll just have to wait and see. But certainly these early stages, the things that matter to the community, the values, the things that the community finds important, and the environmental outcomes, we're not likely to see those change much over time with new legislation. So really what we want to get out of this project, single user friendly plan, um, better integration of Tasman's resources, so we're not looking at things in silos, we're look, taking an integrated mountains to the sea, Kiuta Kitai approach to managing our environment. Um, and through the process, through the journey, as Tim said, it's a very long journey, a greater understanding within the community, within everyone, um, about the role of plans and what those key environmental issues are for us. Um, it's going to be a challenge 
for us, it's going to be a challenge for yourselves to, to engage and contribute. It's going to be a challenge for iwi and the community in the time frames that we have, the narrow time frames. We also want to meet our legal requirements and I guess coming back to the review we've done of the current plan, we want to make sure that there's a case for change. If things aren't broken, and we know there's, there's large parts of the current plan that are working well, we don't want to throw them out um, and start again. So we will retain those bits that are working well and build on those. Uh, Tēnā koutou and good evening. Uh, my name is Jeremy Butler. I, um, unlike the others, I'm a, a long-standing uh, resident of Tasman. I um, grew up in the back blocks of Golden Bay. Uh, and I currently live in, um, in Motueka and have done for, for many years. Uh, master of technology. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about um, some of the more details about the plan. Uh, this will be um, old news to, to many of you, but for some you might find it interesting about how, um, how we develop a plan and what some, just some of, um, some of the details of, of what can be included in a, in a, um, a plan like the Tasman Environment Plan. Uh, so um, here's just a, an example, um, taking a, um, a town like Motueka, with a, say up in the top left corner there, um, uh, our second largest town. Um, uh, the, our current plan enables us to put, a, put overlays over the, um, a, a, a location like Motueka. It allows us to identify locations where people live, the purple colours there. It allows us to identify uh, the, our rural productive areas. Uh, and um, the development locations, the industrial land where we need more businesses, our new commercial areas to expand those should we need them, and also areas that are protected such as um, open space and conservation areas. So we can apply policies and rules to those different, um, those different spatial areas. And then in the bottom right here we've got other, uh, other protections. We've got, uh, we've got um, new roads, those corridors there, so we can plan out you know, where the new road connections should be to make sure that the town is, is well balanced and, and functions well. Uh, the little green dots are, are protected trees and the, uh, the blue ones are protected uh, heritage buildings. Um, and then we can have future, um, well, uh, important infrastructure as well. So it's, it's through these mechanisms that the Tasman plan can really uh, spatially plan out how we want our district to, um, to look and how our towns to develop. Um, added into that, we'll be looking at our uh, growth areas, so the future development strategy which Council progressed uh, uh, last year. Uh, our future development areas, we'll be able to um, plan those as well so that they, they fit neatly into our, into our towns and settlements. Some of the key themes that we're uh, going to be consulting on as we go through the Tasman Environment Plan, uh, these are really the, the themes that we're asking for, um, you know, really directly asking for feedback on. Our towns and local centres, I'll talk to you just shortly a wee bit more about that. Our coast and our marine environment, um, our rural areas, uh, we've done a lot of work on those recently but, um, but there's some certain areas we want to talk about in greater, uh, greater detail. Uh, biodiversity, you've heard a bit about that today, uh, that's really a, a big topic involving um, aquatic um, freshwater biodiversity, uh, biodiversity on the land and in the marine uh, in the sea. Uh, our freshwater, the quality of our freshwater and the quantity, our air quality, and then our challenges around climate change uh, and natural hazards, and finally the special places that we've got, the places that, we, uh, that, are, that are really important and that we want to protect, but also people want to get access to and, and to enjoy. So just a, a couple of those in a little bit more detail, just to give you a flavour. Our towns and our local centres, uh, many of our towns have been growing really quickly. Uh, we've got obviously a couple of really quite big towns with uh, Richmond and Motueka, uh, and then a lot of smaller centres, Takaka, uh, Collingwood, uh, Murchison, Tapawera, Brightwater, Wakefield, uh, and, and each of those has got a very different character, uh, and um, th they mean things to the people who live there, and they mean different things. And so a big part of what we're going to be looking at in this towns and local centre space is trying to identify, you know, what do these towns mean? What is the character that uh, is uh, built into these towns and that people love and, and why, they, why they move there and why they stay there? And what can we do through the Tasman Environment Plan to protect that character? Um, and what, in, in some ways, maybe what can we do to change it over time as well to, to make it even better? And uh, looking at other aspects, um, as, as Barry mentioned about having a, a really well-rounded process to, um, to look at everything else, like the, the, the quality of the water and the streams that runs through, the access to, uh, to jobs and to um, uh, entertainment and to the commercial spaces, so that you can get to those places easily from your home. So all of those aspects uh, for our town, towns and centres will, will be really important. Uh, many of these we haven't looked at for, uh, over, for yeah, over 20 years, uh, so um, we, we need to go back to those communities and, um, and, and work with them to, to talk about that character and talk about what makes them special. 
Another example is our coast and our marine environment, obviously a, 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 <laughs> an environment which encapsulates a lot of interests and uh, that, that narrow strip along the, the coast uh, has got a huge amount going on and you can just see that in some of the pictures here with our, uh, the, the, the biodiversity, the marine and land biodiversity, tourism activities, uh, the, the use of the beaches uh, and also really important uh, strategic infrastructure in the form of two ports with Tarakoi, uh, which services the aquaculture and uh, in Motueka as well and then there's um, our, our, our transport linkages. So, so that's just another flavour of, um, of some, some of the more detailed issues that we'll be working through. Well, kia ora koutou. Um, yes, my name's Cathy and unlike my esteemed colleagues here, I'm a very recent migrant from the Kaipara district in the far north, uh, arriving here just after lockdown. So myself and my colleague Maya, the newbies on the team. But absolutely loving the district, I love the food, love the mountains, love the beaches, love the rivers. It's just a stunning place to live, so thank you for your warm hospitality. I've met some really awesome locals as well. What I'm um, talking to you about tonight is our commitment to iwi partnerships and how you can stay engaged in terms of developing this new plan. Iwi partnerships is a journey. It's a journey with challenges and opportunities, but it's an exciting one that we and the policy team are really grateful to have. Um, my colleagues have talked to you about the Kiuta Kitai approach to our planning, and that's a very new thing for for Tasman and um, it is a mountain to sea approach to planning, what we often call integrated management. And I think that's a really good starting point that we have with iwi. The good news story is that we have an iwi working policy group that are working really closely with us in a collaborative way to develop this plan. So there are nine iwi groups in Tasman with interests here. So. It is a challenge, but it's, it's a really good opportunity to get this plan in a really good place. We'll also be working with Māori organisations and see that's really important as well because there's quite a few Māori organisations in the Tasman, so that's just as valuable to developing the plan. So as we work with your stakeholders and community, we'll be working alongside with iwi. You won't be able to see this slide, but my next... Um, sharing of information is around how you can stay engaged. So this is really important that you've come tonight and how we, we want you to go away feeling really excited about staying engaged with us. So as um, Barry talked about, we, we've done the looking backwards at the, the current plans and now we're all looking to the future. So this is where we need to go, people. We're going over here. This is where we're at and this is what we're wanting from you is your issues, your values, and what you think is going to, the future is going to look look like. So working together with iwi, with stakeholders, community, we all need to work towards a sustainable future for all of us. What these future years look like, we still don't know because of the RMA reforms, but we're in a really good time space and landing with all your issues and values up front now so we can deal with what comes out of our newly elected government. There's three engagement rounds that we've planned, but they may change in the future, next year and the following year. We're in round one at the moment, which is looking at our different wahi and looking at the issues that you see and the opportunities for managing those issues. <coughs> and that, that's, we're doing that in the next couple of months and we do that alongside regular meetings with iwi and, um, and, and stakeholders. So. This is where we're at, and this is where we head to once we've received all our all the issues that we from yourselves, the stakeholders, from community and iwi, we'll put them all and um, have a good look at those, analyse them, and take them back to the elected members who will provide us with some clear direction on taking them back to you and testing that we've heard you correctly, and that some of the proposed options meet meet the needs to address those issues. We have a promise that we are making tonight and to all of you is that part of our engagement means that we all come back to you on a regular basis to keep you informed of any changes to the timeline and timeframes that we're involving. 
our communities, but also the information that we've gathered, we'll share with you, all those sorts of things. We will come back to you on a regular basis. So it's really important that each of you give us your details so we can maintain that, that contact with you. But we also have means where you can um, keep an eye on what we're up to, and that's visiting our, our website, www.environmentplan.tasman.gov.nz. And we also have an email which you can send us any of your questions, um, any information you think that we should have a look at, at environmentplan.tasman.gov.nz. So I'd like to thank you all for coming along tonight. It's really exciting for us to have this engagement. There'll be plenty more. We'll be having some drop-in sessions as well as some more presentations. So tell your friends and colleagues to come along. We're an exciting lot to play with. So no my, out of my. Thank you very much, everyone.